Our guest today is a very familiar face because we met um, Sharon back in season four um, when we talked about not only yourself but also your um, book traditional sweet recipes from Malta. So thank you so much for having us back again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both for coming and thank you for joining us today. Well we've got a very nice surprise later on in this interview. That's why we love doing our interviews with Sharon <laughs> because you. there's always a treat at the end of them. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, um, we met you for, in season four and we talked about your um, first publication, Traditional yes. Sweet Recipes from Malta. Yes. Um, uh, you have since, um, or you're about to release yes. your second, the second volume. That's Tell right. us more about how this came about. Okay, um, a lot of thought went into creating this second volume um, and actually thinking about should I create another volume? Because uh, I had a lot of people approach me for recipes, more recipes, specific recipes, uh, but beyond those requests, which were quite a few, I felt within myself there was more to give and there was uh, a greater path to follow. So I pursued my second volume of mm -hmm. Maltese Sweets, which has been a lot of work, not only in recipe development, um, I've also went to Malta a few times to create the photography internally. Um, so yeah, it was, just something within me that said I've got more work yet to do and people are telling me they'd like more recipes so it's a win-win. <laughs> so what are we to expect in the second volume? Um, it's uh, a carry-on from the first, um, some quality recipes once again because mm -hmm. that's my focus, um, a nice varied selection as the first um, but I think people will be quite happy with what they see. Well, I'm going to be for sure because I know that you have traditional Maltese alcohol. I do, I do. I've, uh, last volume actually had limoncello. Mm -hmm. uh, this time we've gone with a so the prickly pear liqueur. We've gone with anisette because that's great in baking as mm -hmm. well. And the amaretto, which is mm. amaretto, which is beautiful mm -hmm. on its own or in baking. So some things to complement your baking, but also you can serve separately to people. What about this beautiful cover that you've got? It's just, oh, it just screams you. Malta, doesn't it? Thank you so much. It does. Uh, my husband and myself took that in our trip in December. Um, it's actually in Robert mm -hmm. and it's just a narrow street and that's the name of the street. It's called Triedea, which right. is gorgeous. <laughs> um, it's, it's the all-time classical Malta. Um, it's where I'd love to live if I yeah. had a choice. But yes, it's in Robert Malta. Mm. Thank you for that. I also noticed that you have um, sweet pastizzi, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, sweet pastizzi. Tell us how you developed that. And, um, you know, we're so used to, well, in Australia, we are used to sweet pastizzi, yes. like um, Nutella pastizzi, for si. example, apple pastizzi. Yes. Um, uh, but it's not very traditional Maltese. So there is um, a twi an Aussie twist to it? There is an Australian twist. Um, I actually did return to Malta in spring and believe it or not in the Festa Talafrali they were selling strawberry pastizzi. Wow. So sweet pastizzi in Malta does make an appearance mm -hmm. but because pastizzi in Malta is such a staple of a yeah. lot of people's diet they don't need to extend and diversify their range but obviously within Australia we have here um, so my flavours include apple I've gone for a classic chocolate brownie, which is mm. beautiful, and mixed berry, I think, is now top my favourite. So right. some beautiful flavours there. So what's our treat today? <laughs> oh, the treat today is a white European nougat. Uh -huh. Now, I wanted to touch on this because not only is it, is it a good recipe, there are lots of tips to be had firsthand because mm. there is a bit of technicality to it. And secondly, within the second volume, I've included a different range of flavours because mm -hmm. um, after some demonstrations I had some people approach me telling me you know their husband or a family member was nut intolerant and that brought me to thinking look I'll create a, bit, uh, a few more flavours to cater for those people as well. But nougat sounds so hard to me. I, mean, um, I wouldn't even think of making nougat. <laughs> um, it's quite straightforward and the great thing about it is that you don't need a great amount of equipment, a candy thermometer, a hand mixer is all that you need. Um, it's all about the recipe and the quality of the recipe and I'm happy to say we've got that.
Now, I know that you do a lot of um, demonstrations yes. as well, okay. and I'm sure our viewers would love to hear about your demonstrations and where you have these demonstrations. Thank you. Um, I've always done my best to approach people, make myself available, and also to share my knowledge. So I've made an effort to have cooking classes and demonstrations at libraries here in mm -hmm. Victoria. Um, so it's an ongoing progress. I'm already booking uh, demonstrations for 2019, so they're free to attend and it's just for people who like uh, food, who love Malta but not everyone who is Maltese comes to them but you're welcome to come. Now the only special uh, piece of equipment that you need is a thermometer, whether that's a sugar thermometer. I'll be using this one here which is battery operated, a hand mixer. I'm using my mother-in-law's hand mixer today so thank you Lydia. The only next thing that you'll need is a basic tray. My today's, the tray that I'm using today is 19 centimetres by 29 centimetres. Now start it by lining that with rice paper. Before you begin in uh, cooking the syrup all of the ingredients need to be measured and the reason for that is is that the uh, syrup cooks very quickly so you don't want to be caught off guard. The ingredients for today are two and one third cups of white sugar, one cup of liquid glucose, uh, one third of a cup of honey and two or three tablespoons of water no more than that. Now, lately I've actually been adding some lemon juice. The reason why we have lemon juice is that it prevents crystallization. Secondly, once we have the water, sugar, glucose, honey measured, we stir that once into the pot and we brush the sides of the pan with hot water with a pastry brush. Immerse your thermometer in hot water and that's what I'm doing now and the reason for that is that if you've got a really hot liquid which this will get um, and you immerse something cold into that that shock um, of temperature difference can trigger uh, crystallization. So we're going to boil that today to a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. Now if you prefer a softer nougat you can cook that to a temperature of 135 degrees Celsius or even 130. 130 is a very soft nougat. So that's now beginning to boil and I'm just going to repeat the point about not stirring. So we've only stirred once prior to putting it onto the heat so we don't stir again because that can trigger crystallization. So it's just a waiting game now. Now when you're immersing your thermometer into the pan, don't touch the base of the metal pan. We're just immersing it into the liquid. The cooking process, as I said, takes a very short time. So just be patient and stay with it. Don't be tempted to move out of the zone at all. So as we're approaching the temperature that we need, you'll find that the syrup is getting golden, it's getting thicker, and you can see the bubbles. Um, they begin to get larger and burst at a slower rate. I'll also quickly mention that once the nougat's ready, I have my uh, prepared tray. I also have a pellet knife and a scraper. Now I've already greased these with oil so that when I actually take them out of the bowl it's going to be really easy to transfer and not be too sticky for me. Now today I'm actually wearing long sleeves which I highly recommend because even if you get one drop of syrup on you that's going to remove your skin and burn for hours. Now that's 37.3. Uh, I'm going to beat the egg whites now. So we have our whisked whites ready to go and my syrup cooked at 140 degrees Celsius. So just gently streaming the syrup into the egg whites. Just the last bit of syrup now. And what I also do is right towards the end because there's quite a bit of syrup at the bottom of the pan. So what I do is I actually scoop that out because that's measured ratio and carry on whisking. Thank you. 
at this point I also like to be kind to the hand mixer and then I start using my wide spoon. So it's just a nice gentle flicking action. Now obviously it's very hot at this moment so the egg whites actually are still cooking. So that's going to continue to thicken as it cools. Now can you see how that's holding its shape really? I'm going to immerse the nuts in there, give that a stir and once you put the nuts in it actually drops the temperature down because you're, in, you're introducing something else to um, that hot mixture. It comes to a point where it's so difficult to actually mix anymore. That consistency is perfect. So because that's greased it's going to be really easy for me to transfer that from this bowl into this tray. Can you see that? It's not sticking at all and that's perfectly uh, what I wanted. So scrape down the sides of the bowl. You could if you wanted to just overlap that and flatten it out with a palette knife if that's how you choose to do it. Now what I'm going to do at this point as well I'm going to cut some rice paper for the sides of the pan. So I'm just going to smooth that out with the palette knife and allow that to cool. Once that's cooled I can actually wrap that with cling film. It needs to rest for at least five to six hours before I can cut it and portion it how I'd like to present it. So this is a nougat that I've literally made last night and as I said this is half the recipe. So half the recipe produces three bars of nougat. So Sharon, thank you so much for that. The smell in here was just absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So this is the basic nougat? Yes. Yeah. So but that's you've, got, yes. you've got various um, flavours here. So what else do you have? So we have strawberry, mm -hmm. uh, chocolate, pistachio and my husband's favourite is orange and apricot but I'd like to say with the colour variations mm -hmm. they can be mixed as you go along so those who are not nut intolerant can put nuts in if you're intolerant to nuts obviously leave them out and the book is out early uh, in 2019 early 2019 for volume two uh, traditional multi-sweet recipes which i can assure you there are some great quality recipes to come